So we're going to do this thing in two different parts. So first, I'm going to talk about you know, what API monetization is all about, how do you go about monetizing your APIs. We'll talk about some framework pieces. And then Mark will come and share uh, a success story on how they went from start to you know, in the journey of uh, monetizing their APIs. OK, so this year, uh, you folks may have noticed that uh, we are doing Q&A a couple different ways. Of course, there, there's a mic out here up front. So towards the end, we'll try and have some room for time for Q&A. But if you go to your next app, there's a, there's a Dory Q&A link on it. You can also ask questions out there. As we go towards the end of the presentation, we'll be reading some of the questions which are posted out there. <coughs> OK, with that, let's get started. So when we talk about APIs, as companies try to transform digitally, what they're really doing is they are converting and expressing their capabilities in terms of products. And those products are nothing but APIs. So clearly, APIs at some level are a underlying technical detail, but they've been elevated in the digital world to a business level capability. So in this picture out here, you can see various different enterprise assets that many enterprises commonly have. And they build layers on top of it, and then API enable to be able to power these powerful connected digital experiences. So what are some of these experiences? Well, for some, it could be building delightful apps that are used by employees. It could also be building applications which are serving your customer base. Or in many cases, these could be APIs which are powering full-on ecosystems with your partners. So this session today will touch a little bit about but how to really unlock new business models, how to really grow that ecosystem, and we'll also hear firsthand from AccuWeather. So in our experience, just like we have different maturity levels for technology stacks or certain uh, technology aspects, there is a certain level of maturity cycle within API world as well. In many cases, many of our customers start with a simple project which is just maybe a single API or maybe just a couple of APIs. Pretty soon, when that starts to get a little bit more adoption, it becomes a little bit more mainstream, and you start to get into what we call as a program, which are much more than just one or two APIs. And ultimately, what you really want to get to is a platform. And what that means is, in a very systemic way, organically, you are organized as an API company. When you think about being API first at that level, clearly you can see at this scale, the impact grows from talking about things like developer productivity, innovation, et cetera, to be able to generating new revenue models. So APIs essentially now become these digital channels where you're able to grow an ecosystem and get into monetizing certain enterprise assets, which you weren't able to do before. And that becomes extremely important in this digital transformation age, where companies are expressing their capabilities as products, which are nothing but APIs. So let's take a peek at you know, why, what's the motivation behind trying to make sure that an API program is successful? Well, clearly, there is someone investing money in it. There's an investment the enterprise or the corporation is making. So it has to align with business goals. Secondly, you want to be able to justify the return on investment. And last but not the least is to have the right level of visibility. So one question which commonly comes up uh, when customers start embarking on an API program, well, I have a, a slew of APIs. Do I just monetize everything? Turns out that's not always a smart choice. Because there are certain APIs we believe are the right candidates for being monetized, but some aren't. So let's talk about what are some of the APIs that shouldn't be monetized. Right? So some examples out here are ticket booking or store location. These are organic core business APIs which provide value to your consumers. However, they provide 
and derive indirect value. So let's say if you're a ticket master, which also happens to be an Apigee customer, they have an application where you can go and buy tickets for various kinds of concerts, right? Well, that's not something that they would monetize because that's part of the core business that they're offering. However, you start getting into a section of your APIs which help developers, and we're talking about application developers, which help developers build revenue generating apps. So examples like weather data, messaging services, and Mark out here will talk about how they have achieved that. Think about you building an ecosystem where today, companies like AccuWeather are becoming more of a data company. That's their IP. And there are many other application developers who would like to weave in that experience of taking weather data and embedding them in different application experiences that they're delivering to their customers. That's a perfect example of how an API, uh, why that API should be monetized. So do we just take an ad hoc approach or do we actually follow a process? So it turns out there's a very well thought out and trusted what we call as API monetization framework. And it's actually a very simple five step process. So the first one starts with identifying what are your core valuable assets that provide some intrinsic business value. Then understand who the audiences are, right? Who's really going to be consuming those API, those services? And then comes the main part. How do you really bundle them? So a package or a product bundle starts to get into think digital transformation, think APIs or products. So if you are the product owner, how do you really bundle and create a package which is good for regular consumers or direct consumers on one end, and maybe have a different bundling mechanism for your partners if you're trying to grow an ecosystem? And then offer, which means once you have a bundle, how do you offer up those APIs to be consumed with different kind of rate packages and rate plans? And then last but not the least, measure. This is a very important part, because many times when I ask customers, hey, how's the API program doing? So, the API are performing well. Well, great, but that's only part of the equation. Are they deriving intrinsic value? How do you measure that? Are the APIs being adopted? Are they generating enough API traffic from a set of partners that you thought should be doing that? Right? That becomes a very important piece. So what does Apigee provide from a capability perspective. So in this picture, I'll, I'll try and just go from the right to the left to make it a little bit more easy. So this is what Apigee's API monetization platform is. It's built on the core platform with monetization capabilities integrated into it. So let's start from the very right-hand side. On the right-hand side, what you see are nothing but business assets. These are the core enterprise data assets that we spoke about on the very, very first slide. They are exposed as modern APIs at some point, or in some cases, you may need the platform to convert them into modern REST APIs. Once you do that, API monetization has two facets to it. One facet is you as the API provider. So that's one persona that we tackle. So as an API provider, in this case, AccuWeather, they are the provider of APIs. You have a set of capabilities that you need, such as I need to bundle and create a package around my APIs. I need to be able to create rate plans that I can associate with that offering. And more importantly, I want to be able to do metering, billing, all those are capabilities that an API provider needs. Now you go to the other side of the spectrum. Those APIs are meant to drive an ecosystem. They are meant to drive consumption across partners and other constituents. So for the API consumer, you equally need the ability for them to be able to discover APIs, for them to be able to subscribe to certain rate plans and do things of that nature. So all of that is transacted through the developer portal. And ultimately, those APIs that we spoke about are powering these connected uh, and detailed experiences. And the, the developers on this side becomes the key entity who are the missing component in ensuring the success of your API program. So with Apigee's API platform, which is a full-featured, full lifecycle API platform with API monetization built into it, it is an extremely comprehensive, flexible, and extensible platform. So you have a lot of capabilities in terms of the different kind of fees, rate card options, freemium plans, 
you're able to leverage many of the capabilities built in, and I'll show a very quick demo, and use them to be able to quickly monetize your APIs. Okay, with that, I'm going to do a very quick demo here. I'm hoping the demo gods are with us today. How many people out here, just a quick show of hands, have used Apigee Edge? Okay. Another question, real quick. Promise that'll be my last question. <coughs> Excuse me. How many are monetizing their APIs today? Even if you're not doing that through the Apigee platform? Okay. Excellent. So in this uh, quick demo, I'm going to cover a few different aspects of the core platform, and then I'll also talk about the, the monetization pieces as well. So out here, <coughs> I'm logged into Apigee Edge. This is our management UI. And so I'm logged in. Think about me as an API provider at this point. So I'm using this UI to essentially build what we call as API proxies. So think about the slide that I just showed where you have a lot of enterprise assets. Okay. Those assets are nothing but APIs that you have. Either you own them organically, or they are sitting on top of some packet application that you have, or perhaps some homegrown systems. Think about Apigee sitting in the front as a facade layer. So when we represent those APIs, we do them by what we call as API proxies. An API proxy is nothing but just a simple method definition, a flow which says, here's an API call which comes in, executes some policies, and it goes to a specific backend, which is nothing but your API. So API proxy happens to be the number one primary construct in the Apigee Edge platform. Now, what happens is when you, as the product owner, in this case, who owns the portfolio of APIs, you come into this screen out here, which is what we call as a product bundle. So within the notion of Apigee Edge, you have this concept of a product. Think about a product as being nothing but a grouping of a certain number of APIs. So let's say you have 100 APIs, and you may only decide to monetize five of them. Remember we spoke about which APIs we monetize and which we don't? So if you think about that bundle, you could come in out here, take that product bundle in this case, we just call it ad service, product bundle, and this may have four or five APIs that you want to monetize. So in this product bundle definition, you define what your transaction recording policy is. So it's pretty simple. Anytime you want to monetize your APIs, you want to be able to ensure that you're only monetizing those API calls where you have a successful response. You may have certain errors with API proxies. Out here in this definition, you're saying, which API calls do I really want to be able to recognize for monetization purposes? So in effect, this kind of becomes your system of record for keeping track of which APIs are being monetized. So that's the kind of stuff you declare out here. Out here you define which specific resources within those APIs you want to be able to monetize. And you can add specific custom attributes. All of this level of detail is available to the metering and billing engine as API traffic is being piped through the API platform. It is picking up what you define out here in terms of enforcing uh, some of those um, aspects. Once you're done building a product bundle, what you then end up doing is building a rate plan. And this is really where you have the ability to create different kinds of rate plans. So we spoke about some of them. So essentially, you as a provider will figure out what kind of offering you want to make for these set of APIs or this API product. You give it a rate plan name. You pick the bundle and you pick the rate plan type. So this is an example of what I was talking about. Now, you can monetize APIs differently. You can say, well, you're going to pay a flat fee for a monthly use. I don't really care about volume. It's X number of dollars a month. You can pick fees only. Or you can have a rate card which will say, his rate card which says how many APIs and for what amount. You can also do something uh, much more sophisticated where if you have a partner ecosystem which is getting traffic onto your platform, you can use a revenue share arrangement where you know, there's a cut of a specific amount of revenue, dollar amount, that you as an enterprise can ascertain from that transaction. So again, 
These are various options out here. I'm not going to spend time on each one of them. And then you can create the start and the end date. So as an API provider, you've taken the APIs, you created a bundle, and you associated that to a specific rate plan. Once that's done, the monetization engine kicks in. As API traffic starts to flow, we start recording based on your preferences, those APIs which are meant for recording purposes. And then I'll very quickly just hover over some of the reporting capability as a provider that's available. So you can go create different kinds of reports out here. Revenue report, billing, prepaid balance. So again, from a monetization perspective, we have integration into payment providers. But many customers of ours who already have pre-built and homegrown billing systems, we can act as a system of record and provide you all the transactions that you need to be able to bill your customers. So I'll show you an example of a report out here real quick, but Mark is going to cover that in some more detail. So out here, here's an example of a, 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 re, a re detailed report which can come in and it will give you the transaction output. So I'll see if I have any data in here. Okay, so here's a very quick example of some transactions out here and some recording being done around certain kind of transactions. Now again, this data can be taken and dumped into your billing system, or as I mentioned, you can use other capabilities from here to be able to generate billing and reporting as well. So with that, let's go back to the slides. At this point in time, I'm going to turn it over to Mark, and then he will walk us through the AccuWeather story and how they uh, took off the program and also talk about the consumer side of the house and how they tackle certain things like product bundles and rate plans. So with that, Mark, take it away. Thank you very much. And first we're going to watch a short video. <laughs> I became fascinated with the weather when I was three years old when I fell in love with snow. And uh, by the time I was seven, I knew I wanted to be a weather forecaster. So AccuWeather, I started in college as a second year graduate student. And AccuWeather is now the largest source of weather forecasts and warnings in the world. We've achieved this by having the greatest accuracy. So AccuWeather was founded 56 years ago, really on pen and paper. Um, serving uh, business customers. And over the last 10 to 15 years, really morph into a digital solution, and APIs basically power that entire transformation. The API is a way of feeding the best weather information into other apps and integrating easily however they want to use it. We've been using Apogee for our API developer portal for over 18 months, and since day one, when we literally started with zero developers, We've now branched out to over 50,000 developers out there in the community. A lot of people don't realize how many products and services are out there in the marketplace using AccuWeather APIs to power that back end. We serve nearly 50 billion API requests per day. Apogee made it very simple for us to set up self-sign up for potential clients. It gives us the ability to monetize our API and also to offer free APIs to people so they can try it out. By having access to analytics, we're able to really get real-time information for what our developers are doing, what they like, what they don't like. It allows us to make that quick judgment to what we want to do moving forward in the future, as well as helping our developers get better experiences out of our APIs. The weather forecast is more important than it's ever been. The weather can cause a flight to be canceled, rain out a baseball game. It interacts with everything. There are millions of developers and, and potential users around the world for this API. They can take our data and our forecast, integrate it into whatever they're doing and make it better. All right. Well, first I want to say <laughs> thank you very much for uh, coming out today and thank you for, to AppG and Google Teams for allowing me the opportunity to be here. Um, so as you saw, we're actually coming up on our 57 years here at AccuWeather. And really, it was, the company was founded on the principle that Joel understood the value of specialized forecasts for people. 
And what I mean by this is he started going to local businesses in the area and selling like to gas companies specialized forecasts to help them predict their energy yields or to a, a local ski resort and helping them predict when they should be making snow overnight to be the most efficient and save money. Over time doing this and kind of selling these specialized forecasts, he earned that reputation for uh, his value in the service of what he was doing. And the company evolved into newspaper, radio, TV, and eventually websites. But as you heard our CTO Chris Patty say, in the past 10 to 15 years, we've really become a full digital solution. And that evolution happened because of APIs. But what makes weather data so important? Well, the fact is, is that the weather impacts everything. What you do, what you wear, where you go. Every day, you make conscious and unconscious decisions based on the weather, whether you realize it or not. That's why so many products out there in the market are using weather and incorporating the weather to enhance that product experience. Some products are built specifically around the weather. Some popular examples is you've seen phones, tablets, watches, a lot of products out there that give that information. But there's a lot of products that have actionable and triggered automated decision-making responses, like connected home products, smart thermostats, smart cars, watches. There's also been smart health products. Uh, one of my favorite ones that I like to tell a brief story just to understand use cases of weather APIs in the real world is a company called Cohero Health. Cohero Health has a brand of connected inhalers, and they use our APIs in a way that if for somebody with a respiratory illness and they use their inhaler, it calls our current conditions API. Over time, as you begin to use it, it begins to build a database of that current conditions information. It applies machine learning to it, tries to find patterns, identifies potential weather-related triggers that are causing that respiratory problem, and it then uses it to look at our forecast API to try to predict when you may have another asthma attack. So uh, I just always thought it was a really cool outside-the-box use case of our APIs, and it just shows how powerful it can be to enhance your products further using weather data. But Cohero is just one of many enterprise clients that AccuWeather works with. Um, we've been actually selling APIs for over 10 years at AccuWeather. Um, not to mention that AccuWeather runs a lot of our own products and services on our own APIs. Um, so Cohero it, and all these other companies up here help make up our 50 billion API requests per day that I, we talked about in the vi video. I mean, I'm willing to bet, actually, that pretty much everybody in this room has at least one product in their home that is powered by AccuWeather APIs on the back end. That's how popular they are. But the thing is, in doing all this enterprise partnerships that we had, we began to realize we think we could do more. We started to think, were we missing an opportunity with what we were doing by focusing on these large companies? These are the biggest names in the industry, but the industry is consistently growing and evolving. So we wanted to make sure we're looking at what is the next great idea? Who's potentially the next big partnership that we can work with? So to get there, we created developer.accuweather.com. So in May of 2017, we partnered with Apogee officially to create this portal. And the purpose of it is it's a self-serve portal to engage the developer community in a new way. Um, we wanted it to be easy to use and help us increase our business and revenue opportunities without having to significantly increase our resources to get there. So how did we get along this journey to actually create this site? I'm actually going to go back to Prithpile's monetization framework and go through this. So the five key points, identify, understand, package, offer, measure. To create the portal, we went through this exercise kind of on our own. I mean, we had the recipe for an enterprise success, but it was a very custom and time-consuming process to kind of get to that point of selling it to those customers. So we, wanted, we started asking ourselves, how can we translate this to a self-serve environment? How can we make this a, a cleaner, more efficient process? Again, not trying to hire all new resources to get all the eventual clients. We wanted to have something else simpler and easy to use. Let them find us, come to us. So the first step is identify. For us, what sets us apart? What would people want AccuWeather, or why do people want AccuWeather APIs for their own products? Um, as you heard Joel Myers, our founder, say in the video, I mean, our accuracy is important to us. We've been ranked number one for the past three years in a third-party study for our accuracy. 
uh, we have a very truly global service. We have like over two languages and dialects, uh, 60 countries for severe weather alerts. I mean, literally everywhere on the planet we provide the weather for. Um, we also have a very robust and efficient API, and that's very important to us. Again, 50 billion API requests per day. At times, we serve over 1.5 million API requests per second. For some companies, that's more than they do in a day. For some, more than a week or even a month. We're doing that at times during the day in a second. So we had the confidence in our data as a product, and we felt it was definitely unique to be able to offer to our end users because we feel an API can be more valuable for your audience if it has impactful data. And also, it has to have an API service they can trust and rely on. So we felt we had these with our enterprise APIs. So next we had to think about who's our new target, target audience. So again, the weather impacts everything. And everything is powered by APIs. So we wanted people to use AccuWeather APIs to power their ideas and business. But not just the big companies. We wanted to work with the startups, the small businesses, the single developers, the students, the weather enthusiasts with just a great idea. But the problem was, again, our sales resources were very focused on these enterprise uh, agreements in the space. And the contracts were very custom, and the, it was uh, very custom for the content and the pricing, and it could sometimes take days or weeks. So we knew we needed something that was, again, self-serve, quick, uh, something that would increase the opportunity without increasing those resources. So we started thinking, how can we engage people on their own and get them to come to AccuWeather on their own without having our sales staff consistently going after them. So that led us to our packages. And this is probably the most interesting aspect. I'll start with saying we love Apogee's monetization features because of the options that we had. Uh, we actually utilize, I know it's a little blurry on this screen, but we actually utilize a base fee and a monthly CPM rate. We also offer a free package, which we didn't offer before, which that alone is great, because now people can come to us, find us, test us on their own. But the base fee gives us the ability to kind of set a, a, a so, so to speak, threshold for API request limit. And that base fee covers up to that point. But instead of capping and cutting off a developer as you're using the API, we then have a CPM rate if you go over that threshold. And we love that because it gave the developers more freedom and flexibility to do what they wanted. There was no hard cap on our package limit. We didn't want to stifle the developers' creativity. The last thing you want to do as a developer is worry about, oh, great, my product's taking off. I hope my package doesn't cut me off before the end of the month. So having that ability to let them go over is great. It lets them to focus on growing their idea, not worrying about minor things. But as we went in through this, we started to look, think about what content do we expose? For AccuWeather, we had our enterprise APIs. We intentionally did not offer everything from our enterprise APIs on this portal. Because the portal does a lot more for, the, for us than just simply automate um, our, a new audience experience for us, or a new audit target audience. It helps us act as a sales channel to lead developers to our AccuWeather API, and eventually, hopefully, to our sales team for a greater partnership opportunity. So each package has additional content as you increase in dollar amount. But some content is still by contacting our sales team only. It's a more premium content, more premium experience. And we want to be able to talk to those different partnership opportunities to see how can we help you. Again, part of my role. How can we help you? How can we work with you? Really leverage that API. We weren't getting rid of our enterprise sales process. We just wanted to supplement it, make it stronger. Another thing we had to think about was our own lines of business. Everything internally at AccuWeather, for the most part, runs on our own APIs. We also have a lot of other data delivery methods. So we had to make sure we're being consistent and fair across the board with our data and pricing. We can't be cutting out our own lines of business by offering a, a package with set prices, but still not offer other opportunities elsewhere. So we had to be cognizant of the fact that we're looking at all the ways that AccuWeather brings data to the people and making sure that was fair and consistent across the board. And then finally, the last thing we had to be mindful of is what our competition was doing. Because any good business would say, you have to always be mindful of your competition. Making sure that we're still consistently providing that accurate weather data forecast and a reliable API service. We want people to come to AccuWeather because of the name and the brand that they know, but we want them to also stay. You have to maintain that consistency. So now that we had our packages, we had to think about how can we put it out there. 
So by partnering with Apigee, it helped solve another uh, challenge that we had at AccuWeather, and that was making our APIs easy to find and use. Uh, people were unsure before how to get to our APIs before. The most common way was that people were seeing some of the partnerships that we had and potentially had a product in their home or on their, their phone or something, a widget, and they saw the AccuWeather brand label on there. And they thought, okay, there's data here somehow. How do I get it? And they tried to call our sales team and get started from there. But then that's another challenge. There's a lot of people that don't want to talk to a sales team member. Uh, think about if you're a startup company or a single developer or better yet, a student. Do you really want to talk to a sales rep and go through a contract and a legal process? No, you want to just go somewhere, sign up and get started. So by having this portal, it made it much easier for us to get the word out there, let people find it, try it on their own, sign up for free, get, do some testing. We want them to just sign up, pay and go. No delay, no days waiting, minutes now. Get started. But once it was available, we had to create a new marketing campaign to try to get the word out there and reintroduce ourselves to the community. Again, people weren't sure how to find us before, but now we're out there, we have this portal. So we want to let people know about it. Uh, the partnership with Apogee has been great for us because, I mean, as you saw that commercial, uh, that was just a, one of a three-part series, actually. Uh, we've also been on many blogs and opportunities with them. We've, all, we've also leveraged other Google resources like Google AdWords and digital campaigns. Um, and as you see from all those cool swag pictures, we've taken it to hackathons to kind of get the word out there. And it's been really cool taking it to hackathons and letting uh, the students know or other developers if they want to keep using this after the hackathon, just stay on the site, sign up and go. So it's bringing that awareness and the engagement in that way too. But another thing we had to do is make sure we had a proper presence on developer sites and resources, like even programmable, pro programmable web, excuse me. Our presence was confirmed in studies like this one from late 2017. And I showed this graph specifically because we launched in about mid to, or mid 2017. So this was just after the launch of our portal. And this represents the APIs and SDKs that readers from their site were most interested in. And as you can see, Users had a very strong interest in AccuWeather, but if you actually drilled down into our profile and read some of the comments, people still didn't know how to get to us. We even saw people saying, oh, you have to go to our sales channel. It's very difficult, never mind. Well, since then, now at the portal, we've refreshed our presence, so to speak. We've gone to these different resources and said, we have this new portal. We've actually seen a lot of people come through sites like Programmable Web, found us, and then moved on and actually purchased content. So it's making sure you have that proper presence and reputation uh, for your product as you get out there. So now that we felt we had a solid new sales channel at the portal and a solid reputation, it was important for us to nurture our product. And that you have to consistently keep measuring. So we do use Apogee Edge. And these numbers are actually, I stole the, or pulled these out on uh, Thursday of last week as I was finalizing this presentation. So as you see, since May of 2017, that's our numbers. And with Apogee Edge, we're able to consistently monitor growth like this. We can get snapshots of our users in real time. Um, it allows us to quickly see any changes we make to our documentation or marketing campaigns that we potentially use to help get the word and awareness out there. Are they being successful? So it's been very helpful for us to kind of get that bird's eye view of those numbers and growth and success. But also with Edge, we can drill down and get the individual analytics for individual accounts. So with this, we can see what APIs are they using? What APIs are they not using? Are they doing something well? Are there any problems? Because that happens too. Are there any abusers of our API? But also more importantly for product managers and the sales team, are there any new opportunities? We can look at clients like this and see what APIs are they using? Are they using excessively? And we can see, is there a potential here to reach out to them as a new client? Because again, we wanted this portal to be a sales channel, not just something to replace, but it's something to actually help bring us the most promising leads. Let them come on their own, hopefully even with a small single idea, and continue to grow it with us, and hopefully be the next big partnership. So it's really created us for us a great new lead generator as well, as well as just providing additional revenue re uh, line of revenue for us. And then finally, you have to monitor your overall health. So with this, we can look at our response times, the, the volume, the errors. You have to consistently, or we can consistently monitor our overall health of the API and make sure we're providing that fast, reliable service that we, we've become known for. But 
Because if you can't provide that good, reliable service, why would anyone even put you on their product to begin with? The last thing you want to worry about as a developer is, oh no, my data provider just failed for no reason. No, you want to focus on nurturing your idea and your product. You want to be able to grow. But thankfully, developers have been using us. And since our launch, we've already seen some pretty inspiring stories. So we actually had a young uh, man come to us and he asked if he could use our APIs to power his tortoise habitat. And what it is, is he said his family had a tortoise habitat, and they used our current conditions API to actually help control and automatically trigger and the ecosystem within that habitat based on the outside conditions. So it's automatically adapting using our current conditions API. We also had another gentleman come to us and say, I have a backyard awning, and I'm using your API to automatically power it to open and close based on the sky conditions and precipitation. And then he even reached out to us and said, your API is so easy to use, and we love the accuracy. And they were both actually just using the free trial. So just again, a weather enthusiast or somebody with a great idea, how easy it was for them to go through. And then finally, in hackathons. This is actually a picture from last fall um, when we were at Penn State University. And what was great and to hear for us is as we take this portal there, students were coming up to us and saying, <coughs> excuse me, with uh, little to no experience working with APIs, they were able to go on our portal because the documentation was clean, easy to use, using the portal that we had with Apogee, they were able to just go in there and start developing. They didn't have to worry about how does this work and how do I do this. They were just able to flex their creativity and just start building some really great ideas. So with all the success, though, we still see even greater potential for ourselves. We know there's even room we can improve, adding more content, uh, new, more pricing options. So we're excited about what we can do with Apogee to enhance this and monetize it even further. So overall, we've been, we just love the, the partnership that we've been having with Apogee and uh, what it's done for a developer community. To paraphr paraphrase Joel Myers, developers are able to take our APIs, make their products better. Because for us, that has always been the whole goal. Let developers easily put the power of AccuWeather behind their products and build cool things.